I'm Patrick Denard from Medford, Oregon. I'm going to demonstrate a bank cart of remplissage. Our defect is completely prepped. My next step is to place an accessory posterior cannula. I like to use a spinal needle first. This cannula is typically directly lateral to my posterior inferior cannula. Usually it's going to be two to three centimeters. And I want to get an angle of approach that's going to aim toward the middle of the hill sac's defect. So this is pretty good here because I'm right in the center of the defect. Next, I'll take a switching stick and I'll go down to just above the posterior capsule to confirm that I'm at the right location. So we can see the switching stick. We are clearly just above the posterior tissue. I'll insert another seven millimeter threaded cannula. So the goal of the cannula is to go below the deltoid and just above the posterior soft tissue. And at this point, I take the cannula and move it in a circular motion to clear out all the posterior soft tissue, which is the bursa. And I can clearly see that I'm just above the posterior capsule and rotator cuff. Once we've established this space, it's really important that your assistant holds the cannula so it does not back out. I'm first going to insert my inferior anchor. You want to insert the inferior anchor first because once you insert the inferior anchor, it becomes difficult to see the superior anchor. So I use a 1.8 millimeter knotless fiber tack anchor. I'll insert with a sharp guide to penetrate through the posterior tissue. I'll typically try to be right in line with the hill sac's defect. I can just see the tip of the insertion guide here. That's going to provide a good angle of approach because I don't want to over or under tension the posterior capsule. Once I establish that location, sometimes I will move inferior so that I'm directed where I have the most space. Just below the head, I'll remove the trocar of the guide and I'll be just up against the cartilage of the humeral head. If I have a really large defect, sometimes I won't go all the way over to the medial edge of the defect. I typically find that a 1-8 anchor works very well in this location. Now prior to removing the guide, it's important to push the cannula back down to confirm that you have it just above the posterior capsule. And I'll remove the guide. Next, I'm going to place my superior anchor. Now I will insert the guide first without the trocar in place. So both anchors are going to go through this same cannula. Once I get down to just above the tissue, which I can see here, now I'll insert the trocar into place. And I think that's important so that I just do not catch the other sutures on my way down. So here we can see the spike just reaching the soft tissue. Once I go through barely, I'll direct away so as to not damage the cartilage and just use a subtle twisting motion. Again, you can see my anchor placement is in line with the posterior capsule. So I'll tag both sets of sutures. I'll typically tag one shorter so that I can distinguish which anchor is which. So again, we can see both sets of sutures are coming out the posterior cannula and I'll set these to the side. At this point, I'll move on to do my bank cart repair. So I need to prep the labrum first. Typically, I'll place anywhere from three to four anchors from inferior to superior. You can use a variety of suture configurations with these anchors. You can use simple configurations or mattress configurations. I often use a hybrid approach where I will place a mattress suture configuration inferiorly, a simple configuration in the middle, and then mattress again up top. So here is our completed bank cart repair. You see we nicely brought the labrum and the capsule up against the glenoid. The humeral head is already well centered. We have nice tension of the inferior glenohumeral ligaments. And now we're going to go complete our remplissage. And I think this illustrates nicely how difficult it can be to do the remplissage at the end because you can see already our space here is half that of which it was before. We're actually fortunate we can see in this case because sometimes you get so much soft tissue swelling you can't see at all. So again, it's important to make that decision at the very beginning. So now we have both sets of suture limbs out our posterior cannula. 
the inferior anchor is here. The superior anchor is the one that I'm tagged by doubling up. My assistant and I will take our repair sutures and pass these to each other. And then we will each convert so that the inferior repair limb will be going into the superior anchor and the superior repair limb will be going into the inferior anchor in order to create a double mattress knotless configuration. Okay, now both sets of sutures are converted and we'll simultaneously go back and forth to bring that soft tissue down to the hill sacs defect. Okay, now our hill sacs defect is extra articular and the capsule is right up against that bone bed. So there will be our final tightening. So here's our completed bank card of remplissage. You see that this technique for the remplissage in particular let us complete this remplissage in a very efficient manner, adding perhaps only five minutes to the case. The key steps being placement of the anchors first, followed by your bank art repair, and then going back and tensioning the remplissage.